Hello everyone and welcome back. It's the conclusion of round number one of our feature card during the 2024 Memorial Championship presented by Discraft. Great card here, Aaron Gossage leading things off. We also have Parker Welk, third on the card, Silas Schultz, and rounding us out is Alden Harris. You've seen the front nine. And guys, we didn't chase him away. He's back, Aaron Gossage on the mic again. What, what other post-production commentary? Have you done a lot? Or none, or some, or I haven't done much at all. I okay. think I've done uh, maybe one video um, with my buddies um, at the GoPro games, and that's about it. So haven't haven't been on the mic much. Well, honored to have you as we head into the back nine here at Fountain Hills. They're playing this course twice. We'll play it in rounds one and two, and then if you make the cut, you get to play Vista during rounds three and four. The cut is between rounds three and four, but you'd play Vista twice to close it out. And you gotta love setting up at Fountain Hills and. Just the overall aesthetics of this course. Not the toughest course on tour, but it is beautiful. Yeah, definitely. Beautiful day, too. So we were just lucky to have some good weather, um, play some great golf, and, yeah, sunny Arizona. Um, here on the back nine, it's a little bit different of a mindset than the front. Um, you're um, almost on the front. You're like, what can I shoot this round? So you're trying to put yourself five, six down, somewhere around that range, to give yourself a possibility. And then on the back nine, you're like, can I like keep that going? Oh. You're like, hey, I'm at five down, so I can shoot 14. So then every hole you miss, you're like, oh, knock that down one. <laughs> okay. I don't know if that makes sense. It, it, it totally does because it's not uncommon to see people go eight for nine in the back or even nine for nine in the back. There's just a lot less water that comes into play. It feels even more attackable. There's more safety to it. And every hole absolutely can be gotten. So I, I, I follow your logic perfectly. Yeah, a couple errant shots from Parker and myself there. Um, we're big forehand players, and both of us just threw not the best shots you've ever seen on this hole. You, <laughs> you'd love to be about 15 feet from this basket, and we're both outside circle two even. So, Not what I would expect from either of you, to be honest. Go. Ooh. Oh, but you almost, you almost threw it in. It was a good line. Um, I definitely got a little fire lit on me there. I was like, hey, man, you can't be making these mistakes. It's the back nine at Fountain. This is where you have to score. <laughs> so um, hopefully that'll, that'll get me going here, and I'll actually throw some, some pretty decent shots after this. Yeah, you're going to have to wait another hole to get things going. <laughs> yep. A little awkwardness from this. This is the one main obstacle on this hole, typically, is this tree. Yeah, but anywhere near that tree is pretty easy putts. I think the basket's about 10 feet from it. So um, even if you're right behind it, you should be able to straddle out like Alden did, make a nice putt. We've seen a few different iterations of hole 10, and I really like how it's shaped and ultimately how the landscaping has worked out throughout the last few years as we head over to hole number 11, just shy of 400. Yeah, um, I'm always surprised how far this one plays. It says it's 368. I always think it plays closer to maybe 390. Uh, might be a little uphill, might not. Might just be my uh, my imagination. <laughs> um, but it seems like a great forehand hole for me every time, but I always struggle getting the distance there. That's It's kind of funky how that works. But glad I don't have to throw a backhand on this hole. It's kind of a funky shape for it. And yeah, it brings in uh, that first tree there. It does make it a gap shot. And you can see Alden throws just a touch high and catches the ceiling there. This, not a miss that we see actually happen that often. In fact, I think it's newer that they've added a Mando on that tree. I can't imagine somebody wanting to go right at that tree. But yeah, to see Alden bring that ceiling into play was surprising and plenty of distance there for Silas. Yeah, that was a beautiful shot. He went the fairway driver there and finessed it beautifully. Round play, but not a bad shot for yourself. Yeah. It all comes down to those two guardian trees, right? Exactly. How are you in position to those? We'll see if Parker can make the adjustment from the previous forehand. And he uh, he put a move on that. He decided to go fairway driver, um, which I don't blame him from the distance, but um, then you have to really throw it hard to get it there, and it, it makes it a little squirrelier shot, I should say. Um, and like you said, with those guardian trees, the key is you want to be a little short left or a little long right. <laughs> exactly. It's all about the angle control. 
funny, uh, one of the spectators gave kind of the safe sign. I don't know if they meant like they were safe from being killed <laughs> or if they m thought the disc was safe, but he, he was out of bounds? Yes. So okay. um, I think they were saying it was safe um, because he didn't cross the sidewalk, but oh. unfortunately the planters are also OB. Okay. So he was stuck right in the top of that bush there and um, was out of bounds. So Downhill, what's your angle like? Um, I Wide open, definitely, but a, kind of an awkward stance isn't one I'm used to. And, um, yeah, that was a really solid putt there. Gets my confidence going. Um, I had, like, a shaky one, you know, two holes ago. So it feels good to, you know, make one nice in the, right in the center. So On point, Silas trying to take advantage. His angle not as good, yeah. even though he's a few feet closer. Yeah, very solid putt there. I think he had he could see at least most of the basket from there as well. Um, but like you said, if you're not like in those positions, it's easy to get, um, I don't know, like snookered behind one of those trees, I think is the right term, something like that, where you just don't quite have the putt you're looking for. Head up the small hill to throw back downhill for one of the easier holes out here, hole 12. Yeah, this one's another interesting one. Um, there's kind of a hill right in front of the basket. So if you come up a little short, you usually check on it and you stay short. But if you throw a little bit longer, a lot of times you'll take a big flare skip off the backside. So you'll see players either go through kind of this middle hyzer gap or this wide hyzer gap um, off to the right. And it's just about the distance control. Um, just want to get it coming in nice and slow so that you don't skip too far. Silas so opted for the wide gap. Comes up just a little bit right, yeah, and gets the nice straight skip to the pin. So, very solid shot there. I'm going for the middle gap here. I'm playing a slightly different line, going with my zone OS again, so really overstable. And I just don't throw it hard enough. I was just thinking, is that like a 40% effort? Well, how, how, how hard are you throwing that one? I was trying to throw it closer to maybe 80%. Okay. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it came out maybe 60, somewhere around there and uh, ended up left and short, and if I had thrown a little harder, it would have dealt with both those issues. Um, Alden uh, did like uh, what I said earlier, where he just came up touch short and caught the hill instead of the back side of the hill, didn't get any skip. And then we did have, you can see in the fountain in the background, a uh, little bit of headwind, crosswind here. So all these discs are just like sailing left, and um, yeah, Parker, um, even kind of close to the OB line there left with maybe 45, 50 feet here. Not where you want to be on this relatively easy hole. Yeah. Barely off the mark. I've got to assume, yeah, this actually does come in as the easiest hole on the course. Really? Well, I mean, you got it figured out, right? <laughs> yeah, I guess. I yeah. was about 40 feet there, and once that putt came out of my hand, I was like, oh, yeah, now I'm feeling good. Uh, very clean, right in the center. Never a doubt. And Alden's got a little scary um, right to left kind of wind. Uh, putts downhill just a touch. So definitely can sail on you if you're not careful. But yeah, gets the nose down. Very solid. About 28 feet, I'd say. Yeah, this played at 2.53. So almost a half stroke under par. And you're talking over 100 competitors in the MPO field. And then the next hole played as the second easiest, just a fraction tougher, but not much. P played at 2.56. So 12 and 13, when people talk about must get birdies, these are two that would come to mind. You have to get them, otherwise you're losing you know, strokes to the field. Yeah, definitely. I think the only tricky thing about this next hole is the basket's elevated on kind of a berm. So um, if you land kind of short of it, you usually don't get any skip, so it stays short. And if you land like on top of the platform where the basket is, you'll kind of skip down it a little bit. Um, one thing that's good to consider on this pin, since it is elevated, is what side of the basket you want to be on for like a tailwind putt. Or whatever wind uh, you prefer to putt into, I should say. Um, I always just worry about how tall I am. <laughs> if you're on the, the bottom slope and putting uphill, all of a sudden it, it looks pretty daunting going that far uphill. Yeah, definitely. Going with the same disc. Definitely put a little bit more uh, oomph into it this time, and the hole's a little shorter, so <laughs> very similar shot to the last hole. Alden puts this one nice and wide and doesn't really get much movement. 
and ends up in a spot, I think he's about like 30 feet, which, I mean, when you throw the shot, you're like, wow, that shot's really bad. And then you get up there, and you're like, oh, I'm yeah. still in the circle. Yeah. Nice shot, I think that's all part of what, you know, <laughs> uh, we hear people say it's just a stock hyzer, and it feels like something you should be able to just execute, your eyes closed. Yep. As you said, just inside the circle by a foot or two. Oh, no. Yep, but that's the issue with the elevated basket is um, if you do have a trickier putt, you know, you air ball, you got another one about the same distance. Yeah, this looks even longer. Yeah, he's just outside angle. the circle. On okay. The one. And about three inches short. So that's painful. I just talked about this hole being one of the easiest, you know, on the course, and now you're taking a bogey. Yeah, like I was saying, um, you kind of like are counting all the holes that you don't get on the back nine. You just check off two boxes when you get a bogey. So it's, I don't know, it, that's kind of the way I look at it at least. It's it's a weird way of, of viewing it, but <laughs> just knocked your, your possible score down two rungs. Yeah, and then I think Silas should be about 10 feet, something like that. Yeah, maybe 15. Not too bad, but uh, of all people, seemingly the, the most flat of the putts. Yeah, which is kind of nice. Uh, like you're saying, the, the steep uphill, um, especially depending on how you putt, um, can be a little tricky. But <laughs> Sometimes retrieval is as difficult as it is to get it in. <laughs> Big shout out to our friends over at Dietrich Creative Designs. Reach out if you're looking to have a course design in the area. As we're on hole number 14, this one's downhill 375, but is it me or does it play longer than that? It does play pretty far. Um, I'm definitely throwing a shot that usually goes about 380 for me. And like you said, it is downhill, so it, it does play pretty far in my head. It doesn't head. math. Yeah. It doesn't do the math. Yeah. You're throwing <laughs> 380, yet it's downhill. I don't know, this one's always, I think, just been interestingly deceptive. It's a little tricky too. It's got the same berm on it, so um, key with the backhand is to land like almost on top of the berm because you get just this like little baby skip, and you need to get over about 30 feet. Um, unfortunately, if you catch the right side of the berm, you stay right there. You end up about 50, and if you catch the left side of the berm, you usually get a big old skip. Um, yeah, that's on the down slope there, but that's a mid. Yep. Still a, a sizable skip. At least you're, you'll have an open putt, but a little longer than you were hoping for. A little longer than I was hoping. But yeah, like you said, because it's a mid, um, it does stay in bounds. A lot of times you can get, that can get away from you in a hurry there. And then yeah, Parker's hitting the right side there, so not really getting any movement. And then, um, I always thought it could be a really nice forehand hole, but the trees on the left just come into play a little too quick. So you have to, you have to push them a little close to get the forehand there. Um, Alden made a good correction there, though. Landed kind of right on top of the hill. Rolled out to, I think, Circle's Edge-ish. And you got to be careful about being aggressive here because of that down slope directly behind the pin. It, yeah. You know, something pops up, catches edge. It could easily carry all the way down to the OB sidewalk. Yeah, and then we didn't mention this earlier, but um, you can't be long on this hole either. If you do end up long you end up with this tricky putt through this tree, which I've seen some people make before, but it is not easy. So you're coming back uphill, open look, and you can it. Nice. Yeah, that one felt good. Got up nice and high, nose down with the tailwind, and dropped right in the basket. Exactly at circle's edge, and more putting woes from Alden. Um, that's what three in a row. It, 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 do you feel like that's it's something to do with form, or is that maybe just the new putters or disc selection or anything like that? Or I think just you just get off, off sometimes. Yep, and that's a really solid comebacker there. Um, after you've missed three in a row from about the same distance, you're you're getting a little shaky. So props to him for just coming back and canning that that comebacker. And at this point, you're on the 14th hole. You're now moved to nine under. Are you thinking at all about scores relative to the fellow card mates? 
I mean, you, you, you know it's kind of a good score for you and how many birdies are left, but are you thinking about you relative to, say, Parker, who's struggling? So, honestly, um, in the past, I've always known exactly where everybody is, and um, I, it's just like in my head, I know like what everyone's score is, I know what my score is the whole round, and I've been trying to do a better job of not caring about other people's rounds as much, not letting that affect any of my judgment. So at this point in the round, I have no idea where everyone's sitting. I just know Parker's struggling a little bit. Alden was doing pretty good, but had a couple bad holes. Silas missed a few putts. So I think I've got like a stroke on them is kind of what I have in my head. Maybe a couple more on Parker, but I'm, I'm trying really hard not to keep track of that and keep that as something that I'm thinking about during the tournament. Yeah, and that's great insight, especially during a four-round tournament. Where like It just truly doesn't matter what anyone else is doing, whether someone's 15 down at this point or whether someone's five over you've got, you know, three more rounds of golf to play regardless. Yeah, definitely. Um, a rule of thumb I like to go with is if knowing what the scores are would affect my shot, I'll look at them. But if it's not going to affect the decision or the shot that I'm going to make, there's no reason for me to know. Sounds like great insight. That's the question for everybody in the comments then. Do you care about the scores? Are you watching scores? Do you feel like it impacts you, well, you know, in the first round of two or three? Are you intently keeping track of the scores. That's what I want to know in the comments. We've got some giveaways for you guys, but uh, that's how you can become eligible. Of course, you got to like, share, subscribe, do all the YouTube things. There's two kind of mindsets with it as well. Um, one of them is, you know, do I, uh, you know, does my shots uh, depend on what the scores are? And the second one is that I've been struggling with personally is I get frustrated when someone else is beating me or when they get lucky and they're having a better round than me. Some things like that where I'm like, hey, these are these are thoughts that don't actually help my disc golf there you go. So trying to get rid of those as much as possible is solid. Parker almost connects, but his struggles are going to continue. And yeah. this by no means is a gimme birdie. I mean, I, I feel like this is a little more of a bonus. It says 426. I Maybe I'm just a noodle alarm, but I feel like it plays a little longer than that even. It plays a long ways for okay. sure. I'm throwing the same shot that I threw on hole five pretty much, that like 450 hyzer. And like you can see from Silas, myself, and Alden here, the difference between 15 feet and distance is massive. Um, both of them have these obstructed putts that are very tricky to make, and then I've got a wide open 15 feet, something yeah, like that. Yeah, you're squared up perfectly where you want to be. So really getting the right distance on this hole makes a huge difference. Um, there aren't many hazards on this course, but one of them is these like palm trees right next to the basket. I don't know, and Alden not, not connecting. Uh, I do want to quickly say you didn't see the scores after the front nine, and you're not going to see the scores after this round on this video because we had two feature cards. And so there's going to be another round of golf you're going to be able to watch, and that's where I'll include all of the round one scores for the rest of the division. So we're kind of keeping you on the edge of your seats if you're not paying attention to the scoreboard or the live scoring yourself. Big shout out to our friends at Six Sided Disc. One of their other series that they're working on is they say the plastic is of the details and they want to confirm myths and rumors that they hear about courses and or discs. For example, Glow Plastic is always more overstable. They've got over 10 videos in that series, so check them out, Six Sided Disc on YouTube. And you're keeping things rolling. You're now at 10 under. Three holes left to play. This this is in everybody's wheelhouse, right? It is, and you can just see a total misfire for me there. This is one of the easier holes on the course, and I completely misread the wind and um, threw a zone when I probably should be throwing Captain's Raptor, left it maybe 60 feet right on one of the easier holes on the course. Yeah, the, I'll, I'll break it down. The third easiest <laughs> hole. We talked about 12 and 13, then 16 comes in as the next easiest hole. Yeah, you just got to get it. You can see just high fairway driver, nice and stable. Wind's beating it down a little bit, so they're all staying a touch right. But both those shots are probably about 20, 25 feet from the pin. And this is a really good correction here. He throws this a little bit more inside, gets a little skip right up next to the basket. I've uh, seen plenty of metal hits on this one. I'm just ready for us to capture the ace because yeah. as often you see a skip up and hit the basket or right off the basket. And this is another one. I'm just frustrated by a poor tee shot, and I'm like, 
got to make up for it and gave it a good run on the putt. I was, I was very happy with that putt. Well, you're him. putting from like Tucson way back there. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you're a long way away. <laughs> uh, Parker gets that one to drop, though. Yep. <laughs> you can hear me talking <laughs> in the background. <laughs> How did I throw it over there? Yep. Silas is going to maybe slow down a little bit, go through his routine. That doesn't connect, though. Something's something's misfiring there, right, between the head and the hand. Yeah, and um, I've been there. I, uh, I, you've, you've done a couple of videos of me um, trying some different stuff with putts, and it is frustrating when you it's just not coming out of your hand at the right time. It's not feeling the way it should. So I, I can relate to how Silas is feeling right now. Especially when you're putting yourself right there, so to speak, you know, for the easy drop-in birdie or what should be short-range birdie. And uh, one of the longer ones out here now remains 468 downhill. What um, kind of pump you doing here? <laughs> Again, I think this is exactly the same distance as uh, hole five and what was it, hole uh, 15? Mm -hmm. um, I'm throwing my Nuke OS nice and flat off to the right and um, hoping that I get the ground play right. A lot of times you can take a big skip or you, there's a, usually a pond down there sometimes if we've had any rain. So. Um, it's a little bit funky, and then of course it's got the palm trees at the end that are a little bit of guardians. That's a great play from Parker, actually. Um, about 30 feet left, putting back the basket, wide open. So, um, really solid there, and you can see I'll yank that one a little bit, but gets a good skip. Yeah, not too punishing for pulling that too far right. And I like breaking down holes into what what shots can I throw that are the exact same during a round? And this course, I've got basically four of them on the same thing. I throw the same thing on hole one as well. So um, very similar shots, and then that way I can get that shot dialed and have a lot more confidence in throwing it. Just trying to make things repeatable. Yeah. Silas is going to push left. You could find some OB over there if you push hard enough. That one's going to check up and be fine. Yeah, like I said, um, the ground play is a little tricky. So um, if you get it pushing a little bit more, it's easy to get that big skip. Um, yeah, and that was a really solid looking putt out of his hand. Uh, nice and smooth. And then you can see Alden has to contend with those trees. Super tough putt here, um, but it's the kind of putt that Alden's really good at. Oh, right side. And I thought that was in for Such sure. Such a pretty putt, too. <laughs> <laughs> Nose up, spinning. Catches that right chain, and honestly, I feel like I need to reevaluate what I think of <laughs> how Mach X's catch, because I've seen a few today where I just didn't expect them to, to not catch the disc. And Parker not hitting chain instead of the upper entrapment, so no chance to convert, and there you are, a tap in. Yeah, that, that's a nice one for sure. Not mad about that. 11 <laughs> under, final hole coming up. Uh, how, how do you feel about an 11 under at this point? 11 under is solid. Um, I'm trying to go for around five on the front nine, and then um, I'm fighting to get to double digits, and anything after that is pretty much a bonus, I would say. I think that um, if you can get up to like 14, 15, then you've got a chance to shoot an 1100 rate around, mm -hmm. which is kind of a cool thing. But um, yeah, today, a um, few uh, miscues here and there. 11 down, super solid for me. I'm trying to play this a little more conservative. You don't want to throw anything away here, so to speak. OB on the left and then high sidewalk. OB on the right, and you get it to check up. But now are you already thinking, uh-oh, I've got a decision to make? Or is the decision already made in your head? <laughs> um, honestly, I thought briefly there's a decision to make. Uh, but, yeah, it's already made, pretty much. Okay. I, I, I know what I'm doing when I get up there. <laughs> Parker gets a fortunate skip off the water. Um, I thought right before I threw my shot, I was like, just don't throw it in the lake. It, that's fair. <laughs> and so I, I definitely pulled it, left myself nice and safe off to the right. Or almost almost too safe from 1-0-B. And that's a solid shot from Alden. We had a like left to right crosswind, so the backhand is a pretty solid shot for that. Forehand's a little sketchier, but it gets a lot of swing. So you can put it well over the water, and it will swing back. This really needs to find the ground quickly. Yeah, it just needs to go. I've seen that shot work if it just travels 20 feet farther. Yeah. But it does go in the water. And I'm in my head, like, I should lay this up. But I'm putting so well. I'm running it. 
But then my body's like, no, no you're, you're not. laying it up. <laughs> it was kind of funny. I, I was full, full run it in my head, and then my hand said something otherwise. Uh, again, not going to be mad with an 11 under. You can see how that's relative to the rest of the card. As we've seen a few struggles, Alden, Alden going with switching the hat around the other way, and it, it unfortunately doesn't pay off. Yeah, it's Silas nice. a chance to say par again, though. It's a nice thing with the backhand, because if you do miss it, you have a chance to say par, but doesn't connect. And then Parker with the fortunate drive, see if he can capitalize on the birdie. No, just not having it. The construction in the background not happening. Yeah. Euro Pizza doesn't, <laughs> doesn't pay me to say this, but if you want maybe the, arguably the best calzone in the world, <laughs> go right here off of 18's green to Euro Pizza. It's pretty solid. I've, I've eaten there before. Oh, man. no. A little weird, man. Three air balls right side, back to back to back. And I'm feeling a little nervous about this 15-footer after that. Yeah, those guys are having bogeys for lunch at this point. You're trying to close out the double digit 11 under. And that one finds some chain. So uh, any parting shots before I let you go? Um, I don't think so. Um, I just love being out here at the Memorial. It's, uh, it's a really fun tournament, different style of golf with the birdie or die. And it's just been such a legacy um, playing this uh, tournament, coming out and watching everything. It's fun to be able to compete in it. Love it. This is, I did the math. This is my 19th time at the Memorial in 20 years. So I'm, I'm in it for the long haul. Big shout out to all the sponsors and the supporters. Of course, Discraft, our presenting sponsor, Spinners on the Green and the rest of the crew there. Huge shout out, Aaron Gossage, the man joining me. 11 under, we'll see how that holds up. We've got other feature cards along with the rest of the division, but this is round one at the Memorial Championship presented by Discraft. Once again, for Aaron Gossage, I'm the Disc Golf Guy. We'll see you guys later for another feature card of action. See ya.